Yeah, I'm going to talk about data, but uh, in a bit different context because um, a lot of people talk about data in the context of, say, uh, complicated tools, big Hadoop clusters, uh, um, uh, scripting languages like Python or R, uh, whatever. Um, I'm going to talk about how it affects the company and how it changes uh, the way we think and the way we cooperate. Um, and I'll try to, be, uh, try to bring in as many case studies of what we do, how we do it, why we do it, uh, maybe without being too specific because we have very short time, uh, but uh, hopefully uh, it will be valuable to every one of you. So uh, a short word about Ganymede is that uh, we are an online gaming company and uh, right now we are about 80 people here in Krakow uh, growing extremely quickly. Our focus has always been online games. Uh, right now most of our products are in the social casino space but it's uh, not only social casino, we also do casual multiplayer games uh, and other social games uh, on multiple platforms, web, Facebook, mobile. Uh, but we still don't see ourselves as a large company. Uh, what we try to do is to keep things uh, operating at, uh, say, efficiency of a startup, which is hard. Uh, but, uh, well, so far I think we succeeded at that. So. Why data? Uh, I think that uh, the most important point is that data brings you closer to your players. And that's really, in a free-to-play market, that's the only way to make money. You have to be close to your players. You have to know what they want. You have to give them something they want to play and they want to pay. And if you don't give them that, they will go somewhere else and you lose money <laughs> uh, or you don't make money. So uh, the way we see data in general, and I think everyone should see the data, is a tool. It's a tool uh, to, br to bring great experiences to people. Uh, so uh, obviously there are other tools like focus testing, but we have millions of players. Uh, you can't do focus testing on millions of players. Uh, this is just not realistic. You should do focus testing, obviously. Uh, and you should use whatever uh, means to get to know your users. Uh, but uh, data is uh, something that's valuable uh, in a large scale uh, of uh, where you simply cannot reach all the, all the users. And with data, you can reach the users that typically are not vocal uh, about uh, uh, their needs or their preferences. You can just see it. You can, you can also do some testing on users. And uh, the, big, the big problem in, in, in gaming right now, I think, and in general uh, in IT industry is that it's easier and easier to build stuff but we don't build it for ourselves. We build it for players and we try to build something that's going to be a great product. And the question is what to build? What should we focus on first? How do we provide the maximum amount of value to our users? And that's the question I think that having a lot of data can help you with. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, data is the feedback loop and this is how it should be seen. So, as I said, it's not really uh, about amount of data you have. Yes, we as a company have a lot of data. We have to use the, comp the technologies that fall under the big data umbrella, uh, which is a very, co very uh, fashionable buzzword right now. But uh, for a smaller company, you really uh, don't need that much. Typically, you will have data set which is probably within several gigabytes or whatever. You can just load it into, the mem into memory in, on your laptop and analyze it. Uh, but you have to do it. And uh, what I think is the great challenge when working with data is not really the tools, uh, 
but uh, being smart about data, extracting the value, and uh, really asking the right questions. <laughs> uh, so uh, it changes the way you think. And really, if you look at what happens in the company, uh, especially at the larger company, there is probably uh, every single process in the company, everything that happens uh, has a possibility to use uh, data about players that you have, data about players that others have, uh, data about the market. Uh, you can do experiments to, to find out some uh, information on the market. So run a test campaign for product that doesn't exist, for example. Uh, this is also the way of gathering information. And, but you have to have the mindset that you can do it, you should do it. Uh, because as I said, if you build the wrong thing, if you focus on the wrong thing, you are wasting money. Uh, so, uh, in the entire life cycle of a game and uh, within generally portfolio management uh, of uh, the products that you have, uh, you, should, uh, you should really uh, uh, focus and uh, say, do I have the data to support it? Uh, you don't always have the data. Uh, sometimes the question is, how can I gather this data? Uh, or Sometimes you just have to rely on intuition and just validate afterwards. So that's the thing uh, of culture, that uh, you should be clear about the assumptions that you make, because you have sometimes have to do it. Uh, there is no way to know everything. Uh, if you try to know everything uh, before doing anything, then you will never achieve. Uh, uh, success, because you will be thinking, thinking, analyzing, and not doing. Uh, working with data is not about not doing, it's about being clear about what you do, why you do it, how are you going to validate. And uh, that's very important. Uh, working with data means that you uh, set aside your ego sometimes. You say, it's okay to have intuition, uh, gut feeling, experience, it's great, but I will, I'm still going to check it with my players. Uh, so I might be wrong. That's the right mindset. So uh, as the slide says, uh, if you read the book uh, Lean Startup by Eric Ries, uh, I think it's a very similar approach. And it should look like a similar approach. because. Ultimately, it comes down to uh, experimenting all the time and uh, validating what you have learned and uh, making good decisions, better decisions based on that. So uh, what I think is very important, uh, that's been the case at our company, is that, uh, and I think it's universal truth, that if we are talking about building company that really uses data in what uh, uh, it does, you can't just have, say, analytics team or big data team or um, uh, just a few people dedicated to it sitting together at the, at, uh, the end of the office. It's got to be something that everyone's doing or has the potential of doing, and they realize it, and they know it's expected of them. So uh, yes, we have data engineering team, but uh, everyone in the company can access the raw data, uh, some aggregated data about our games. They know how to do it, and we actively do training on how to do it. And uh, even within our processes, which I will talk about later, we make sure that people know uh, wh what really is available and how to use it. And they do it. So uh, wh why? Uh, this approach. What we found out is that a lot of questions that we ask are very simple. They're reporting questions on simple aggregates. Uh, it really comes down to SQL query. So if you're a company like ours or every other company that uh, hires smart people who are developers, uh, they are able to write SQL query. They're able to write small script. You don't need data, data analyst, data scientist for these 90%, 80% of simple problems. Uh, just give people the opportunity to do it. Just show them they can do it, and they will, because they are smart. Uh, it's not rocket science to do this kind of simple analysis. And at the same time, 
uh, you will uh, see hard problems. Uh, and this is where you need data scientists. This is where, for example, you need to run some clustering algorithms, uh, know which one to pick, uh, maybe prepare some uh, machine learning model, whatever. That's uh, the kind of hard problems we, uh, we talk about. And this really requires people who are more, say, into this kind of stuff. But still, 80, 90% of problems are just simple ones. So uh, it might not be the case in companies that are not tech focused that much. Uh, but in gaming, everyone's got developers, right? So uh, very important is that uh, what we do is that our teams really decide what to track and how to track it. There are some guidelines. Uh, but uh, well, I don't have screenshots here. But uh, every product team has huge dashboards with the metrics specific to the product. And uh, we, give, we just have tools shared on our internal GitHub-like repository uh, where they can just fork it and prepare their own version. And uh, they can uh, uh, really uh, change the instrumentation of the, of the game to fit their needs. They have absolute control over that. So it's very important that it's embedded into the uh, way they work. So if we have some game feature that's been put into the game, uh, UI design, typically, and not on every team, but uh, typically, part of the definition of ready. So, so it's uh, this scrum term where uh, we say that, yeah, we can start the working on it. Part of the definition of ready is the question, how are we going to measure it? Uh, what kind of instrumentation do we need for that? And uh, do we need to, say, uh, prepare, some, prepare, prepare to analyze it? Maybe it's uh, uh, something that requires extra work. And we have to think about it before. Uh, this is something I told previously. How, how will we validate? So uh, it's, it's important that they are owners of those metrics. They are owners of measuring what they do. And it's expected of them. So uh, for bigger products, what we found out, and this is where we are moving forward uh, towards, is uh, having uh, analysts embedded in the team. Because once product becomes big enough, once the team has enough speed in what they do, they provide features very quickly, uh, they will need more and more of uh, analysis to, to be done by someone who is simply just doing it full time. So um, uh, we don't have it on every team, uh, but that's what we want to do. And basic tasks is just something that we put in a sprint backlog. Because as I said, uh, those basic tasks can be done by most developers. So uh, again, experimentation, extremely important. For us, it's simply a part of our normal working procedure that, that we actually do the summar summary of A-B tests on the sprint review, on the product reports. Uh, this is simply a part of our product report template that what experiments were, were done on the product. So uh, it's uh, wrong to say, I, I had a hunch. I, I wanted to do it. And I spent a month of the team uh, on my hunch. But if you say, OK, I had a hunch, and we did A-B test, and it didn't work, that's fine. Uh, but you know, it's a different kind of mindset, because you have to have this uh, safety net where if you fail, if you do something wrong, you know about it. You know about it quickly, and you can just backtrack. And if you do something right, you, you also should know about it. You should propagate it to other products. So this experimentation is really, is really kind of something that you want to become learning at a level of organization. Uh, so we learn something new all the time. And we try to apply that knowledge uh, to what we do in future. And maybe that's a bit unfortunate uh, uh, phrasing, <laughs> real users, but uh, uh, because all our users are real. But <laughs> uh, what's very important is that data is not everything. I already told about it. Uh, it's uh, something that is a guideline. And you have to treat it as such. And sometimes it's really strong guideline. 
but don't forget about other means of gathering uh, information. So, as I said, it's a question of uh, how organization is structured, how to communicate what you've learned. And that's really a challenge at our scale because you may have great findings in one team. And what do you do to make those findings move to other teams? Uh, and uh, as the company becomes bigger, uh, everyone who experienced the growth of a company can uh, affirm that. Uh, as the company becomes bigger, it's harder and harder to make sure that this kind of information is moved to the right place and that people uh, make good use of it. So obviously, we have screen reviews, we have product reports uh, that are good uh, information uh, propagation uh, machine. But uh, we also have meetings of interest groups, like uh, product owners, analysts, community managers. Uh, they share what they learned, and that's horizontal across the organization. That's, that's, that's really uh, something we found out to be extremely important. Uh, also, uh, company-wide dashboards. Uh, what we do, and uh, I think almost every team in the company uh, right now has a, has a big screen TV in the team room showing the important metrics of, what, uh, of their product. Uh, no, maybe not almost every, but that's definitely going to be the case very soon. Uh, about half of them, to be honest. Uh, Obviously, Wiki is the standard tool that everyone should use. That's uh, a given, I think. Uh, and uh, we also have internal newsletter that we prepare periodically to s and send across the company. So it's important to be serious about it. Uh, it's not uh, something that you can just do and, uh, well, we are going to succeed. Yeah, like I heard that 80% of so-called big data initiatives fail because I think people are just not committed to them. Uh, it is an investment, and it's a very, very long-term thing. Uh, we are still working on improving what we do and in changing how we work. It's a continuous improvement process, and embedding the data in how you work is not going to be something that happens overnight. It's going to take a lot of time, a lot of work, and it will never be finished. So uh, for us, we have built a data engineering team uh, who does a lot of this low-level work. Uh, and they do it full time. Their hands are full all the time. Uh, and that's it, 80, 80 people company. We didn't always have a team like that, but it turned out to be a necessity at some point. Uh, again, dedicated analysts. Something that we, I think two years ago, we had only one analyst in the company. Right now, uh, this, is, this is people we, are, we want to hire more and more, <laughs> and they are almost, good analysts are almost as hard to find as good developers. Uh, so right now we share some of them across the company. That's a necessity, but uh, again, dedicated analyst per team is something that we are finding more and more uh, desirable for us. Infrastructure, yeah, it's going to cost you, and it's going to cost you more and more as you grow. Uh, Cloud-based solutions obvious, obviously have this advantage that you can scale the costs but once you get big enough, you also see that the, those costs can be qu quite high. So we decided to build our own internal cluster. Uh, again, for, for, for different companies, the decisions might be different because there are many factors affecting that. Anyway, it's a cost, so be sure that you are willing to pay it. So automation, again, what we found very important is to have a common set of KPIs standardized across product. How do you calculate ARPU? How do you cal calculate day one retention? <laughs> and by the way, that's not a stupid question, because everyone thinks that yeah, it's easy to calculate. And as you get to the level of the code and the specific definition of, of the metric, it might turn out that the metrics that everyone thinks are defined very simply are not, simple, uh, are, are not really simple. So. Uh, for us, it's important that all our games have common way of calculating those. And that's also something that uh, people like analysts and data engineering are responsible to do. Uh, what's important is that once you set the standards to do it, you get a lot for free. And we reap a lot of benefits uh, because of that. So if we launch a game, 
uh, we have a lot of uh, capabilities pretty much built in into our platform. Uh, that's maybe something that small teams don't have, but they can use third-party tools and get, get, get a lot of done anyway. So we don't standardize on a uh, single tool. Uh, but what we found out is that we mostly use open source tools. Not all of them, but I think that's the most important uh, ones are open source. Uh, we move more and more towards Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, a lot of Python scripts and something that everyone uses, I think, is just SQL. So uh, again, you probably don't have to pay for our analytics software, but you have to pay with your time and actually use it. Uh, and as I said, third party solutions can cover probably about 80, 90% of your needs. Uh, right now, uh, the only uh, advice I give if you go for, with third party solution is to go with the solution that gives you access to raw data. Whatever data you gather, just make sure you can run arbitrary queries on this data, maybe even export it. Uh, there are some solutions that, for example, use Amazon Redshift on the back end and they give you access to this back end. So once you hit the limits of their dashboards, uh, you will be able to uh, maybe do some more complex stuff yourself. Uh, and we still use third-party solutions, even with uh, the, the teams and infrastructures that we have in place. Uh, what's very important is that our business is games. That's what we are building. Uh, yes, we are a technology-focused company, but we don't build technology, we don't sell technology. We sell games. We sell great experiences. Uh, on the infrastructure side, what we use is mostly Amazon EC2 and Amazon S3 on the data collection side. Uh, again, Python is pretty much standard scripting language for, for data. Some people use R, but at large scale, maybe it's not a great solution. Uh, as I said, we have our own Hadoop cluster, and uh, it, it's really a recent thing for us. Uh, and what I'm saying, I think, is really important you probably, at small scale, don't really need it. You can do a lot on single machine. And for a very long time, we had just one machine with 64 gigs of RAM that did everything we wanted. And we were fine with that. And I think you should be fine with that too. Just uh, once you hit the limits, you will probably have to scale and move your data to some more uh, uh, bigger infrastructure. But that's fine. Uh, so. Yeah, a lot of people think they need Hadoop. They probably don't. Uh, it's a question of data volume versus processing speed. At some point, you hit the limits of what single machine can do. And then, yeah, then you probably need some sort of cluster. But uh, those limits are very, very high right now. So the future's directions where we are moving. Uh, what we generally see is uh, we want to get more, say, operationalize what we do with the data, because reporting side is one thing, but getting the data to affect player life cycle is something that's really the holy grail. We're not there yet. That's something we are thinking about. So uh, that, again, can happen at any stage of uh, player life cycle. But in general, what we are thinking about is that games are becoming de facto CRM tools. Uh, so. That's definitely our point of focus for the next year or so. Uh, again, predictive models, machine learning is something that a lot of people talk about, uh, but operationalizing it is, uh, and proving it works, uh, well, it happens. But uh, uh, again, it's a question of scale. Um, what we found out that uh, at certain scale, standardizing your workflows becomes very important. Uh, talent, talent availability becomes very important. So w w when you are small, it's fine to use homegrown solutions. Just run the scripts yourself. When you are a bigger company, uh, hiring a new data engineer, getting this person up to speed very quickly becomes more important. And you want to use standard tools they already know from the company they worked at. So. Uh, uh, that's important. And as I said previously, data pro uh, processing speed versus the data volume uh, is uh, something you have to balance. So 
uh, how interactive you want your queries to be. You don't always need answer in uh, seconds or minutes. Sometimes you can afford to have answers in hours. That's fine. Uh, not everything has to be real time, but you definitely have some requirements what's OK with you. So if you run an analysis that runs for a week, that's probably not fine, unless it's a yearly report. In that case, you probably can wait a week. So you have to decide how quick you want to know the answers, what kind of processing speed you, you need, and then adjust, your, adjust what you do for that. Uh, and again, as I said, I said it quite a few times, uh, maybe I will not repeat myself too much, but don't give in to hype. People say big data, big data, big data, Hadoop, whatever. Uh, what's more important is what you do with the data and how you think about it, how it affects how you work, not what tools you use. And very important thing that people seem to forget about, it's, a, it's an investment. It's got to have positive ROI. So what makes sense for a 100-person company might not make sense for a five-people company who are simply at very startup stage and uh, uh, they need simply to focus on a product and building it. They will new, they, for, for, for small scale, you probably should use third-party tools. At our scale, you use different uh, kind of structure and the, at 1,000 people you use even different one and that's fine. You can afford to do certain things once you are big enough. Uh, and the most important thing at the end is that uh, let's not become just the number crunchers. We are in a creative industry. And a uh, very important thing is that we are building games. We are building great experiences. So that's the prerequisite. Whatever we are building is got to be fun. And yes, data can help you, but that's it. If you don't have a game that's fun, you lost. So gut feeling, yes, it's important. It's very important because that's what we do all the time. We think about great things for people, how to build it, how to make people happy, really. That's our goal. And uh, that's where our uh, passion comes in. But we have to check. We, did we make the right choice? Uh, can we do it better? And that's the kind of thinking I hope everyone will have, because right now we have tools to check it. And that's it. Uh, thank you. So.